So everyone, iOS 16.2 and iPadOS 16.2 Beta 3 released to all developers to try out, to test out, and to see if there's any new improvements or tangible differences between the updates from Beta 2 to Beta 3. So let's quickly go over the new features that came with this new Beta update, because there are a couple that you should take note of, including one that I really wanted to come to Stage Manager and Extended Monitor Support for iPads, which we'll go over in a little bit, but let's get right into this video and talk about iPadOS and iOS 16.2 Beta 3. Let's get into it. Okay, everyone, so let's hop right into this video. So the first thing I'd like to show off is exactly how large these updates were. So you can see that with 16.2 developer beta one on the iOS side, we're dealing with about 560 megabytes. So give yourself at least one gigabyte of space to get this installed and installed correctly. And then on the iPad OS side, we're dealing with pretty much the same thing, but around 500 megabytes. So again, give yourself one entire gig to make sure you have enough storage to get everything installed with no problems whatsoever. So that is what we're dealing with with beta three in general. And then in terms of build number, if we go into the settings, go into general, go into the about section, click on the 16.2, you can see that we're on 20C5049 lowercase e. So all that means is that we are getting closer and closer to the RC edition. Be on the lookout probably for the first or second week of December for 16.2 to be released to the entire public. So the first thing we're gonna talk about isn't actually a 16.2 exclusive. This is actually 16.1 and it's already available to the entire public. So if you have an iPhone 14, so basically the entire iPhone 14 lineup, the new SOS feature is actually out for everybody to use and to at least demo if you would like. And the way to get there is if you go into your settings, Scroll down to your emergency SOS, and if you have a newer iPhone below this section, you'll have the ability to actually demo that. So I'm gonna overlay some of the article that 9to5 wrote about how to actually test it out. And it goes through a pretty robust testing period or testing demo to let you guys know exactly what it looks like. So you go into your SOS feature, like I said, and then it walks you through a couple prompts to test it out. It lets you use that satellite feature, which is very cool to see. And then finally, you can even test out what it would be like to talk to one of the people on the other side that is sending that SOS help. So. That is now rolling out to everybody in the US and in Canada. And again, you have to have an iPhone 14 or newer, which are the only ones that are out right now. And it's not just for the pro model. So if you have a regular iPhone 14 or 14 plus, it'll also work. So definitely give it a try and let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. And then another thing that came out for the iPhone 14 models, this one is exclusive to the iPhone 14 pros. And this is now exclusive to 16.2 developer beta three. So the first thing that I mentioned, the SOS feature is for anybody on the public version 16.1. Now we're getting into the new features of 16.2 beta three, and it's that Apple actually changed up the always on display situation. So I know early on when always on display did come out, and I even made a quick little video of how to do a workaround with this, is that with always on display, Apple kept the screen a little too bright, and people, especially people that were on the Android side, were saying that, hey, we much rather prefer the Android version of an always on display, which is pretty much an all black screen with some white text for your simple notifications and the time. So basically that's what Apple did. So if you go into your display settings in your settings, you actually have two new options, which is to black out your wallpaper completely and then also to black out all notifications. So if you are somebody that wants to do an always on display that's similar to Android, by all means go for it. It is now available to 16.2 beta three users and 16.2 public users when it does release in December. Some other new features of 16.2. So if you have private relay and the way to access private relay is you go into your settings, go into your iCloud, you have Private Relay down here. And Private Relay is Apple's just basically a automated VPN for lack of a better term. So that's always turned on for me. But now basically what that does is it actually hides your IP address from all websites or people that you don't want your IP address to be shared with. But with the new beta update, there might be a website where you do wanna share your IP. So for instance, with this nine to five Mac article, I can just go up here to the menu bar, click on these A's right here. And then there's a new option to show IP address. So we click on that show IP address you get to a little prompt that lets you know, hey, allow 9to5mac.com to temporarily see your IP address and it lets you know what happens. So if I press continue, I'm sharing that with 9to5mac, it reloads the screen itself. And then if I press on these again, you can actually hide that IP address with no questions asked and you're good to go. So that's a new feature depending on if you're somebody that needs to show your IP address in certain situations, now you can do that. Another new feature that came to 16.2 beta three, so if you go back into settings, so if we go into accessibility, scroll down to Siri, you now have an option to change your Siri response. So Siri response or prefer silent responses, this is a new menu item. So normally when Siri responds to you, it responds to you with a voice activation and you can normally turn that off and you can actually type to Siri as well with a feature that came with 16.0 but now you can actually speak to Siri and then it'll respond to you with actual text, almost like an iMessage. So that's a new feature that came to Siri, which is great to see. What is the time? And you can see there is a non-spoken prompt right there. What is the weather? 
you can see that it popped up right there nicely. So that is a new feature with Siri. And then the last one that we did notice is if we go into settings and go to your Apple TV actually, and this has to do with live activity. So if we go into TV, if you go in down to live activities, you can actually make sure that you turn it on for more frequent updates. So this is a new update rate. So it'll start to fetch that update data even quicker, which is nice to have. And then I do quickly want to show you the feature that I talked about with iPadOS. So everything that I mentioned with iOS will also be available with iPadOS minus the SOS features because there's no SOS features with iPadOS or any of the iPads. But the one feature that I do want to bring up, and this is going to be for extended monitor support exclusively. So with extended monitor support that came with 16.2 to the M1 and M2 iPads, you can now grab a window from your main screen on the iPad and drag it into that extended monitor. That is something that was not able to happen. Whenever you would try to do that previously, it wouldn't even try to go into the other window. So that is a new feature, which makes it even more desktop-like when using the iPad. So I'm loving that new feature. I think it's getting closer and closer to being a real solution and a real alternative to a desktop computer. And then lastly, let's look at battery life real quick. I am dealing with a 13 Pro Max. So if I go back into my settings, let's go into the battery, see what we're dealing with. Because honestly, 16.2 beta 2 was a great update. I had zero issues with it. But if we go into here, let it do its thing. We'll go to the last 10 days. We're doing about seven and a half hours of screen on time with about 100% at those peak days. So this day, nine hours and 15 minutes of screen on time. On this day right here, seven hours and eight minutes of screen on time, but almost nine hours of screen off time. Down here, nine and a half hours of screen on time, and we didn't even touch 100%. So these are all great numbers on the iPhone. And now with this one, let's quickly look at the battery life here. We, this is the brand new M2 iPad Pro, so the battery life should be good on here. But if you go into battery down here, go to the last 10 days, you can see on a day like Monday, we had almost six hours of screen on time with 100% charge. This other Monday, we had four hours and 11 minutes with almost 100% charge. So battery life is okay. It just, again, depends on which applications you're using with the iPad. But Let's finish up this video and go to the normal view. And now that is gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, there weren't too many tangible differences. The two main differences that I wanted to bring up and showed you in this video was the new change to the always on display or the new feature, which is they're making it more of like a Google always on display or an Android always on display with the black screen and the white numbers. And then also in stage manager, being able to move windows from your main screen on the iPad and drag it onto that secondary monitor or that extended monitor is a huge win for stage manager and extended monitor support, especially for iPad OS. Now I do wish they brought that to older iPads, but hey, we're taking the little wins as we can with iPad to make it your main computer. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end and leave some comments down below. Did you update to iPad OS 16.2 beta three or iOS respectively? And if you did, how's it running for you? I'm always curious to know. And also if you guys have seen on the channel, stay subscribed because we are doing some giveaways away videos as the days go on for this Black Friday holiday situation that's going on. But until next time, I'm Fernando and I'm out of here. Peace.